Why did you only do the first go of Wanda Sykes? Why don't you ever stay with any of these shows? Because I am a launcher. I'm like, you know that missile that, that falls off? Uh, you don't get fired, do you? No. no what I, do you mean a launcher? I come into shows before they start, yeah. and I help uh, brainstorm what the show's going to be. That's your, that's your forte? Yes, and punch up. And I come in and I write jokes. So why not stay with the show? Let's say, the show, let's say Wanda's very successful and the yeah. show goes for 20 years. Why not stay there and, and make money? That's not why I got into the business. I got into really? the business to sit on red couches and talk to you. No, but I'm serious. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You didn't get fired from Wanda's side. No. Did you get fired? Why? From... Who's saying that? Uh, I don't want to say anything. Did, no. did you get fired from Ellen DeGeneres? I, I did get fired from oh, Ellen did. DeGeneres. But that was, that was sort of like... Uh, I brought it on. I stopped going to the production meetings, and I <laughs> and I started saying things about everybody in front of them as I walked past them. Really? Yeah, I wanted to be out of there so bad. It was so heinous. It was so toxic. You hated it. Hated it. Why is it toxic? Cause Where the medication started. Is that true? Yes. When you were working for Ellen DeGeneres, you started taking medication. My daughter was born the week I was hired, and I came in, and, you know, we had two months of pre-production before we launched the show, and... Uh, Six months later, I had uh, pins and needles all over my body. No, because of Ellen, or just the whole thing? Just the. Uh, Was it just too bland for you? I mean, what what blew your mind? It's just uh, the women and women together. It seemed wrong. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I think was sending me a message. <laughs> yeah. No, it was just uh, no, I, no. This the, the Wanda thing. To be perfectly honest, I was not going to take a job. I turned down a couple jobs. They right. offered me a. a uh, a bunch of jobs, different networks that I turned down over the summer because I have a book deal right. and I have a deal at Fox for a sitcom okay. that I'm writing. So nice. I'm on a new draft of of this of the uh, Fox sitcom. What's and the, the sitcom about? Uh, it's about the letters that I told you. This. My mother got saved all the letters that I was sent when I was in trouble from preschool through college. Right. So it's called Dear Mrs. Fitzsimmons, and it's about the problem I have with authority and how I do the opposite of everything I'm I'm told to do. Would you star in it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then the book is the same concept, and the right. book is with Simon Schuster, and it's... Do, it's so you due, got enough going on that you don't need to be doing Well, the book thing. was due December 20th, and I, I hadn't mm -hmm. finished it. I was not even close to finishing it. So I but why did to, the Ellen DeGeneres show make you so ill? I'm curious. I mean, because that well, seems like a cush job. It seems like you show up. Uh, she's successful. I mean, she's going to always be there, I guess, doing this daytime show. Is it that daytime television makes you ill? Like no, I don't care what I'm writing because writing is creative no matter what for me. Right. I mean, I enjoy, like, I, I left, I was writing on The Man Show. Right. And I left that and the weekend, took the weekend off, started Ellen, left Ellen, and then hosted the Porn Awards uh, like two weeks after I left Ellen. I mean, I don't care what I'm writing. I just, I like to be part of a team where I feel... I want to feel respected, and I want to feel like I'm I'm a I have a voice. On and the show. you didn't feel that at Ellen. Well, I felt something that you've probably felt in your life, which is I felt discrimination. Honestly, really? you know, I felt like as a white man with children, I was I was being honest, uh, Robin. It was a good experience for me. I, every white man should, should feel. And I've written on Cedric the Entertainer, where I was one of the only white guys. I just worked on Wanda, where the, right. the powers that be were black. Uh -huh. And it's like for me, it's like. I love that challenge. I love to come in and go, fine, I put my kid in an all uh, Latino school. My kids are, they only get, get spoken to in Spanish at school. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, what, what, just because you like that kind of challenge, why do they Yeah, do why that? did they you put them in it? Yeah. Well, because I don't know if you've looked at the trends, but uh, we're all going to be speaking Spanish then. <laughs> all right, so you're preparing your kids for the future. Yes. <laughs> so, so the thing I'm, ga I'm trying to really listen to you here, the thing about Ellen was... I'm saying a lot, right? Almost I mean, too much? No. I, I'm trying to understand why you couldn't work on Ellen, like why it just got... Well, it just got to, to where uh, I, think, I think having a, a young kid, I right. was commuting from Venice to Burbank, which was over an hour each way, Every day in traffic, the worst drive in history. Right. And ultimately, my passion is stand-up comedy. It's expressing myself. It's saying my own jokes. But you get paid a lot of money to write on this. A lot shows. of money. It's a, it's a really good money job. Yeah, but I make the same doing stand-up. Right, but you don't have to go on the road. You go to you report to work every yeah. day, and you can be home. And 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 it seems to me like it was a personal thing with Ellen that you didn't like her. Am I right? <laughs> no, it just seemed like that seemed like such a Barbara Walters like no, no it was I'm I balance my life now by doing like I'll do 13 weeks on a show yeah. or I'll I'll try to launch a pilot 
or I'll come in and do punch up on a show. And then I go back out on the road and I do stand up. And then when I'm in a fucking St. Louis hotel room. But you felt discriminated against at Ellen because you weren't a lesbian? Uh, I wouldn't say in the, in the legal sense. Right. I would just say in the um, you felt spiritual sense, I did not feel that I was taken, uh, I was not given the credit I should have been given. Right. Because of who I was. I see. You know, in terms of. Uh, it's a, a, a planet of women. It, by the end, it was it was all uh, pretty much the same type of people working there. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of hot though. I can see why Ellen just wants like lesbos around. I can get into that. Lesbos. That sounds like lesbian clowns, doesn't it? I like it. Come on, Fred. Where's the circus? Are you saying music? most? It's mostly <laughs> a, a gay women who uh, work on the well, show. Well, that's not the problem. Gay women are my life. I mean, my godmother is uh, is a right. lesbian, and I chose her. Uh, well, she's my. Right. She's my spiritual leader. But what are you saying? My best. I'm is saying that when you very work cryptic. Yeah, you really are. No, what I'm. You're asking me is what, it the gay men? what what it was about the show that made me unhappy, and right. I would say, and I said to you, any show where I feel that I'm not being you're just treated fairly, right? Just fairly. So how would that manifest itself? You'd go to work, and you walk in. And you sit at a desk, I guess, and you contribute. You you write. It's a lonely kind of now, job. Does, does no one read what you write? Oh no, no. That's the crazy thing. Is I was getting more stuff on than any. I was sitting. I was the one writer. I was sitting in the front row of the show. Uh -huh. I did the warm up for the show as well as writing for it. Right. And I'd sit in the front and I would write jokes on cue cards. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And I'd hold them up. I right. mean, I would be standing over Tom Cruise's shoulder holding up a Tom Cruise joke that she'd do, right. and I'd, I'd score 10, 15 jokes a show right. on top of like writing a monologue, mm -hmm. or, and then treated very much like the red-headed stepchild. Really? Socially. Wow. Right? Oh. Not by everybody, just... Never you know, invited over the house? Went to the house twice. You did? Yeah, one of the times... Uh, who's the fat guy from uh, Hollywood Squares? Oh, uh... Valanche? Yeah, Bruce Valanche sat on an antique chair and crushed it. <laughs> I think he was all thrown kidding? out of the house. Yeah. You mean you were there for a social uh, event? At no, Owens? no. Oh, it was a writing session. No, I wouldn't go to anything. Like I won four uh, daytime Emmys. Right. I never went to the Emmys. You never went. I never went to the Christmas party. I never went to the rap parties. So you were, so you weren't a team player. Maybe you're I'm not, not a the team, social. I'm not one. a team player. No, yeah. I'm not a team player. Right. But you but, should have been appreciated for your contribution. I, I like to think of myself as like one of those cops who comes in and the and the you know the the sergeant takes his takes his gun and his badge, but he says you're still the best goddamn cop I got. But how yeah, could, I, I want to be there second. despite it. How could Ellen have shown her appreciation for you more? What in other words, she need? paid you a lap dance. One no, lap. Come on. What could she have done to make you feel more appreciated? It sounds like you were the antisocial one, that you didn't want to be I'm there. I'm a very sensitive guy, and when, when I feel unloved, Go I ahead. lash out. So do people have to coddle you with work? A little bit. A what? little bit. They should have said, coddling. You, you, you're doing a good job. Yeah, that's we nice really to hear. We really appreciate sure. you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I need a little coddling. But people keep hiring me. Right. <laughs> Again and again and again and again, I keep getting hired. And guy. you keep leaving, so nobody's I coddling did, Yeah, but, the, but here's the thing. Like the like nobody's Wanda, really giving you the love you need. I came into Wanda, and uh, I said to them day one, I have a book and a script I need to do, and I'm going to try to balance it and do both. Mm -hmm. Halfway through, it was obvious that the, I was working 15-hour days. That this was, I wasn't getting anything done. And I said, I'm, I'm going to have to finish out my 13 weeks because right. that's what a writing cycle is. And, and, then I'll, and it was all very, you know, happy. Okay. Thanks it, for you contributing. And but also, when, when you describe your work situation at Ellen, you weren't even going to the writing meetings. And you weren't going that to... That was at the very end. Right. I yeah. outlasted a lot of writers that got let go. So no wonder they were angry with you. I mean, you were you were, I mean, yeah. you were you were not showing well, up. Well, the word "fired" is uh, not often used in Hollywood. People are afraid to say it. Right. But I enjoyed it. I got fired. That's. <laughs> Did that's, they bring you into the off? Who fires you? Not Ellen. No, this was the best part. It, it's like getting fired is like getting punched in the face. Like it's right. actually fucking sweet once in a while. <laughs> you need I got it. a call from my lawyer and my agent. I'm sitting in my office. It's Wednesday afternoon, so it's a production day. Right. And normally, you know how firings go. It's Friday. It's right. the end of the day. They give you some some a little bit of respect that you can quietly pack your shit. Wednesday at noon, I got a call from my lawyer and my agent saying you're 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 toast. Pack right. up. Your, I go what? And then I look outside my door, and there's a security guy standing there. Wow. And now I'm doing the walk of shame. I oh, on a Wednesday with cardboard awful. boxes walking through the lobby. Did Ellen say goodbye to you? No. No one. Not one person. She never called. So she was angry with you. No. She wasn't. 
Ellen is a pro. She's extremely funny. And she doesn't care about me. <laughs> you know, it's just there's. No... But if she wanted you there, you would. Do you have been think there. she knows she's your in, name? She she's wanted in on me the there. She's in on the decision. Oh, she is. But there, you know, with any show with a host who's really, it's their if their name is on it, yeah. and they're there first thing in the morning, and they're there at the end of the day, and they're picking the colors for the couch, and they're picking the jokes. You know, you got to make sure that you're clicking with that person because it doesn't matter if you're writing a lot of jokes that are getting on. At the end of the day, if they're not comfortable around you, you're not really being a good service to them. Do you think she knows your name? Does she know who you are? Yeah. She she didn't before the show. I got in by the the executive producers knew me and the head writer, so they brought me in. And then Mm -hmm. I wrote a sample. She read, liked, we met. No, we didn't meet. First time I met her was... What do you do? You, well, how do you prepare for your job? You just read the paper and then you write topical jokes about what's going on? And, yeah, you yeah. write down about... And then you write some sketches and then you write some possible field pieces. How do you like do that. that when you're a stand-up comedian? And let's say you're, you're going through the newspaper yeah. and you think of a great joke. And then you hand it in to Ellen. Don't you say, gee, maybe I'll keep this one for myself? Um... Generally, I just uh, write the funniest stuff I can and I give it to them. If they don't use it... Right. Then I might say this might work for me, but usually when I'm writing for somebody else, I'm write I'm writing in their voice anyway. Right. But then once in a while, yeah, there is a there is a concept that you'll come up with that you go like, oh fuck, is this mine or is this theirs? And like when I was writing on Wanda, there was one there was one bit that I didn't give her, and I and it wasn't like I was at work. I thought mm-hmm. of it in my off time, but mm-hmm. it could have been for her, and I didn't, and I felt really guilty about it. What was the bit? Uh, well, it's a game show, and. Uh, it's it's basically um, you know, I don't want to say it on the air because it's uh, you know I'm, I'm he's gonna still going to use it. I'm going to go, use gonna it. Go oh, okay. it. Yeah. So you feel guilty. Although, although tell me about this. I have a pitch for a late night talk show.